Welcome back to Ryan and Ryan here on SportstownChicago.com. I'm Ryan Stupprich. And I'm Ryan Risky. All right. Uh, yeah, we had Mark Rohde on, and uh, we talked a lot about uh, the Cubs and obviously everything that's going on with them right now. The Cubs currently are four games above 500 at 28 and 24, but seven games back of the Cardinals, which is it, it's always tough you know, to, to, to beat the Cardinals, obviously. And now we have to worry about the Pirates as they're really starting to heat up, as uh, as Mark said in the interview. Right. And also, uh, Charlie Morton back from injury for the Pirates. He's got a 193 ERA yep, through like he, three or four starts. Good. Yeah, he's good. Garrett Cole is really good. Um, so, I mean, they've got a really good pitching staff and Liriano and everything. So it, it's definitely going to be tough um, to to come back from... Uh, well, it's I mean it's going to be hard for anyone to to beat St. Louis, but um, it's, it's going to be tough. And St. Louis had has had two m- major injuries, pretty much. I mean Adam Wainwright out for the season, but Man, then Adams might Matt be out Adams, for the season. Yeah, and uh, so I mean you, your first baseman and your ace pitcher are gone. I mean if that happened to the Cubs, the Cubs would be in last place. <laughs> yeah, if Lester Arrieta plus Rizzo went down. Yeah, I I think uh, that that. I think you'd cash in the season there, but the Cardinals are still finding a way. I think they're thirty something and eighteen, thirty six and eighteen. Yeah, it, something it, like that. It's not good, and the Cubs are really going to have to take advantage when they play St. Louis again because they probably should have won three of four in St. Louis during that series, or at least split the series, and they yeah, end up losing at, at three. least split the series because they played really good. At, the offense really showed up for that. Yeah, series. the offense showed up. The bullpen didn't. The bullpen kept. I mean, I think they gave up a lead every time, and the one game that the Cubs won, they they were holding on for dear life. I don't think it was a a very no. I remember that game. Was I was close thinking game. they might lose because I remember Molina had a check swing RBI single on a pitch that bounced in. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, <laughs> regarding the cup, we were talking about possible trade deadline. Yeah, you know, uh, targets for the Cubs as we. Mentioned there could be some pitchers like Scott Casimir with Mark Grody. Or, Scott Casimir has been linked to a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yep. Or uh, Deion or Navarro if they want to get an extra bat on the bench or add in an extra bullpen arm. There's been reports that the Astros, the Nationals, the Cubs, and the Mets have all contacted the Athletics regarding Ben Zobrist and his versatility. Wow. Yeah, I, I could see Ben Zobrist. He seems like a Theo Epstein type of guy. And Joe Madden because loves he, him. Yeah, and Joe Madden loves him. He was with him in Tampa Bay for a while, for a while, obviously. Um, yeah, that I, I think that would be an interesting fit. Uh, Zobrist is from the area. He's from Illinois. I I, I, I think he went to Olivet Nazarene uh, University. That's where the Bears have their training camp stuff. Uh, he went there for college. I know. So so I think it would be a good fit and. And plus, he's a pretty good baseball player, too. He's very good defensively, obviously. He gets on base. Switch hitter, gives yep. Joe Madden a lot of options, especially if he on a day he doesn't play, he could pinch it. Especially because we haven't seen Tommy LaStella back. Uh, it, it's so frustrating because there hasn't really been any news out, like why he shouldn't be back yet. Yeah, yeah. That, the in, as Mark said, the injury to Neil Ramirez... A lot, probably a lot more serious than everyone initially thought, and that must be the same with Tommy yeah, Lestella. Because remember, the Cubs were trying to hold off putting Lestella on the DL, except then they had uh, no choice, right? Because then they, they were going to the three-man bench with and two. It was two catchers, and I forget who the that fourth outfielder was because Lestella and Olt were both injured and couldn't play. Yeah, I I don't remember uh, exactly. Caesar. Who it, was. it was Caesar okay. and two catchers on the bench. Caesar and uh, and the two catchers on the bench. Yeah, that's um, that's, that's not yeah <laughs> yeah. You're not gonna win too many games with a three man bench that includes two catchers. No, no, now not I, at all. As we were talking about the Miguel Montero situation, that that really keeps your catcher a lot more fresh though when. You have three catchers because you have to find playing time for all of them because everyone knew David Ross was John Lester's guy. Yep. And Wellington Castillo was playing against most lefties. Right. And then Montero pretty much started the rest of the games, which, you know, I mean, really that's to keep Montero fresh for late in the season. 
Yeah, I uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was kind of strange, though. Three straight games, David Ross started. Yeah, I think it had to do with the lefty pitching, which... I, I guess so. I mean... I, because, I mean, having David Ross bat is is not good. I mean, see, he's fine I, yeah, defensively. I was just yeah. kind of thinking, what's a better option? David Ross or Miguel Montero against the lefty? Because I'm sure he can hit lefties somewhat. I don't think he's, like, completely useless. It's not, right. It's, it's not like he only has, like, two career hits off of a lefty or something. It's I mean, like he, he he's, had, that, he's yeah. had seasons where he played, where, you know, he was the everyday catcher catching 140, 150 games, where he was batting 280 and 290. Yep. Yeah, so... Uh, I mean, those days are gone. I mean, it's now he's be a grind. probably, like, a 260 hitter, except, I mean, right now, David Ross, I mean... Yes, he's great defensively, and him and Rizzo won the game yesterday. Yes, they did. Yeah, there was also another key moment in that game. I don't know if you brought it up with uh, Mark. Um, when there was the bases loaded and two outs, and Ian Desmond hit that line shot that should have that should have gotten into the right field corner and scored three runs, except Rizzo made a great play right. at first base. Yes. I remember uh, when he hit that, I was like, oh, no, awesome. not again. And then Rizzo made the catch. Yeah, I, I forgot to ask that to Mark. I guess we both forgot to ask that. But, um, yeah, that that was definitely a really nice play. Uh, um, it was really exciting. I, I mean, because he didn't really even have to jump. He just sort of reached his glove up, and he got it. Uh, it was really exciting, right. um, and, it, and it, that got him out of the yeah, inning. Of as an, and as we mentioned to Mark, that's the kind of game that good teams win. The Cubs last year, the past four or five years, would not well, have won a game like that. Well, I, that, I, I was worried anyway that they would blow the game because the bullpen's been shaky for a couple weeks now. And, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, if yeah. this was last year, the year before, that line shot gets into the corner. Oh, yeah, for sure. And and in the ninth inning, I, I think uh, the Nationals would have found a way to get at least one run across. But luckily, David Ross and Anthony Rizzo were on the same page there with that pickoff, and they got it. And uh, the Nationals had no more challenges left because, for some reason, Matt Williams used both of his challenges. No, he only uh, you, you only get one. Well, don't you get one for the seventh, eighth, and ninth innings? Uh, no, apparently they changed. You get one. And if you're right, then you get another one. If and if you continue to be right, oh, you keep getting okay. an extra is, one. Yeah, they said that they is changed that it. how it. Uh, okay. Yeah, the playoffs you get two. Okay, uh, is that how it was last year? Or I don't think so. Well, last year it was the way I was. I think thinking. last year it was the way you were thinking okay. because I thought that it was because last year I mean managers were challenging twice a game and they must have changed it in the off season and no one really seemed to. Catch it. You I only get so. that second, because last year was you get one for the first six innings and one for the last three. Now it's just yeah. you get one, and if you're right, then you, you get another one. To, okay. to do it. I mean, that was a bad challenge, in my opinion, by Matt Williams. Because He's not a very good manager, honestly. No, no. That, I mean, that, that was more like a PR move when they hired him, in my opinion. Um, you could just tell by looking at it, there was not enough evidence to overturn that call, and that's what pisses me off. Mm-hmm. And we'll get... Well, I guess now's a good time to talk about the replay because I have more bad things to say about it. <laughs> All right, um, go for it. <laughs> I mean, there, there wasn't clear evidence, even though it, it to me it looked like Addison Russell completely missed. Was it Danny Espinosa? That was wrong. I forget who it was on base. It looked like Addison Russell completely missed him. I, I I thought Addison Russell completely missed him, except because the call on the field was out, he was going to remain out because there wasn't oh, okay. clear I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I, I I was flipping back and forth between the finals and Cubs, so I missed the so I missed some of the the Cubs game. But uh, oh, I didn't care about the. Uh, it was very exciting. Finals. Okay, so you didn't see this play at uh, second base. I, I saw it in the highlights on their page. Okay, um, yeah. So, but I didn't see it live. Okay, yeah. So to me, it looked like Addison Russell completely missed the guy. It was a poor tag. Mm-hmm. And he was called out, even though the, th- the throw beat him by a mile. I mean, the th- he, he when the throw beats the runner, they're most likely going to be out. And there just wasn't enough evidence. There wasn't really clear evidence to show that he was safe or out. It was the call on the field was going to stand. And one thing that really, really pissed me off was the, the Royals-Indians game two nights ago. And what happened was, I believe it was a Royals r- player was running to first base. Oh, no, I'm sorry. An Indians player was running to first base. He was called safe, except replay showed that he was out by three steps. 
three steps, that's kind of a lot to to uh, to not be certain about, right? Yeah, like he, he was called safe, and he was out by, like, three steps. The Royals challenged. The call was not overturned. Yeah, and the see, Royal, that's the thing uh, I don't yeah. like. I don't like when it's so clear, so concise, and you don't change the call. Because you don't think that there's enough. It, it's stupid. And the best part is the MLB actually apologized to the Royals for getting that call wrong because it was so obvious. It's the people who are working in Secaucus, New Jersey, or New York, wherever it is. Yeah, I think it's in New York. I think the NBA Replay Center is in Secaucus, New Jersey. But yeah, it's um, it's really stupid that they they just. I mean, they're seeing all the angles we're seeing on TV. Oh, no, they have more angles in uh, New York. They well, have more angles right, than because what we see. they have. Both of the telecasts too, so they can right. watch and I the think whole they have specific and the cam- I think they have specific cameras for replay. I'm sure too. they do, and they still get it wrong, which I I I don't just, I don't understand. Yeah, I mean, I I I really just this whole MLB replay is really bad. Same with the NFL because NFL is bad too. But honestly, I don't know if it's as bad as the MLB is right now. No, because the MLB it's like the MLB is determined to like you know. And you don't need 100% evidence to overturn it. You need 150% evidence to overturn it. Right. Like, you have to it's watch. like they're always trying to keep people yeah. on base. It's Yeah, it's like they want to, like, you have to watch it in, like, regular speed to be able to know if, if it, whatever, if he looks out, if the call was safe and it looked like he was out, you have to watch it in full, in regular speed. And if then if he looked out, then you can call him out. It. It's really stupid. They continue to get calls wrong. And I remember when I was at the Cubs Pirates game a couple weeks ago, and Starlin Castro stole second base, and he was called safe. To me, when they were looking at the replay, I didn't see conclusive evidence to overturn the call. Mm-hmm. Somehow they overturned it. <laughs> and I was just kind of wondering. It's like every like, time you think they're not going to overturn it, they do. And when you don't think they are, right, then the they thing. don't. It's you don't so know. Stupid. And if you've noticed when you're watching broadcast, or the Cubs broadcast, the White Sox, or ESPN, or Fox, or a national, they don't go and say what they think the call is going to be because they're usually wrong when they're yep. like, you know, they look sad. They don't go and say, this call is going to be overturned. This call is not. It's like, you know, from that angle, it looks like he's safe. From this angle, he looks out. Yep. I don't know how you need 100% evidence to overturn safe or out call. Is he safe or is he out? I mean, that that's really is. Is he safe or out? I yep. really don't understand it. Well, and you would think it would be that easy, but it's, mm-hmm. it just yeah. it ends up not being that easy. Oh, and uh, also regarding the uh, replay rules for this year, I believe that it was also – I know home run replay does not count towards a challenge. That's its own thing. You just ask the umpires to go review – a ball to see if it got out or not, or okay. if it was fair or foul. That that doesn't count. I think the new thing that was implanted this year, and you and I saw this firsthand, was when we were at the San Diego, uh, the Cubs Padres game for Chris Bryant's debut, and Fowler hit that ball into the ivy. Yep. I you're allowed to ask the umpires to call to look at the replay just to confirm a rule, like to get a clarification on right. a rule, like when that ball was stuck in the ivy. Do, right. I mean, does the ball? I mean, does it have to be, like, completely disappear in the Ivy? Or is it, if it's stuck, it's an automatic double? Which I do like that that doesn't count towards a challenge. And you're allowed, and even if you're out of challenges, you're still allowed to ask them to review a rule. Because, I mean, yeah, I mean, another thing, remember how, how long some of these replays take for the MLB? Like, I think the average one last year was, like, two and a half minutes. And yet they still get these calls wrong. <laughs> Right, it's almost comical. It's it's just it's 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 crazy. It really is. Um, I mean, I remember people back in I believe it was year two of home run replay, and there was a it was the Athletics Indians game. I forget who it was. It was a no name guy on the Athletics. They have a lot of those guys hit a ball that that hit the top of the wall in left field. And you know, Cleveland has a hot, tall wall in left field. Yeah, they do. And replay showed that the ball hit the that top. Like, there's a yellow line, and then there's a fence, and if it hits the fence, it's a home run. The ball clearly hit the fence, and they got the call wrong. And that was the first time they got a call wrong with replay, and the MLB apologized for getting that wrong because they called it a double, even though it should have been a home run. And 
You know, I mean, I believe that's the only time they've gotten a call wrong on home run replay, except they keep getting these calls wrong. They need to stop.